It looked like nothing special. Small, square, and heavy enough to make your hand ache after a while. Yet during the most frigid standoffs of the Cold War, this unassuming heating brick was as vital as a rifle. Soldiers trusted it. Arctic pilots refused to fly without it. Deep in NATO bunkers and Soviet outposts alike, it kept frostbite and failure at bay. While the world's superpowers raced to build nukes and satellites, this quiet chunk of chemistry made sure human beings could actually survive in the places those machines were meant to reach. Today, it's nearly forgotten. But the story of the Cold War heating brick is one of raw ingenuity, born out of the kind of desperation that only minus 40 degree winds and nuclear paranoia can create. After World War II, both the United States and the Soviet Union expanded their reach into the planet's most brutal frontiers, the Arctic, Siberia, northern Canada. These weren't just wastelands, they were the perfect vantage points for radar arrays, missile silos, and early warning systems. But there was one colossal problem, the cold itself. In those conditions, ordinary tools didn't just fail, they died. Kerosene froze, matches shattered. Batteries drained to zero before sunrise. Even the toughest field stoves struggled when fuel gelled in the tanks. For scientists and soldiers stationed in these frozen outposts, warmth wasn't comfort. It was survival. And survival demanded something better than flame or electricity. So, engineers set out to create a new kind of heat, one that needed no fuel, no moving parts, and no oxygen. What they built would quietly become one of the smartest survival technologies of the Cold War era, a reusable heating brick that, quite literally, never froze. Inside each of these metal-encased bricks was a secret weapon of chemistry called a phase-change material, or PCM. Sounds fancy, but the idea is simple. When something changes from solid to liquid, it absorbs heat. When it turns back into solid, it releases that heat slowly and steadily. The version used in most Cold War heating bricks relied on sodium acetate trihydrate, the same substance found in modern reusable hand warmers. When heated above about 58 degrees Celsius or 136 degrees Fahrenheit, it melted into a clear liquid, storing a remarkable amount of energy. Once activated, usually by bending a small metal disc or introducing a seed crystal, it would begin to solidify, releasing that stored warmth for several hours. Here's the genius. Unlike water, sodium acetate doesn't expand or crack when it freezes. It doesn't degrade after hundreds of uses, and it doesn't need oxygen or combustion. That meant it worked anywhere from submarines to high-altitude jets to underground bunkers, without risk of suffocation or explosion. This wasn't just chemistry, it was survival engineering at its finest. By the early 1950s, both NATO and Warsaw Pact forces had adopted versions of the heating brick. Field manuals from the era describe soldiers using them to warm rations, thaw frozen boots, and even preheat vehicle engines before dawn patrols. A few could heat a tent. Several could keep a small outpost livable overnight. In 1962, during Operation Cold Feet, an American intelligence mission to an abandoned Soviet drift station in the Arctic, 
Agents carried heating units based on the same principle to prevent film reels and surveillance equipment from freezing solid. Soviet researchers facing those endless polar nights in remote weather labs depended on nearly identical devices. Each brick stayed warm for about three to five hours, keeping its surface right around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. The casings, often made of thick aluminum or steel, could really take a beating, literally dropped from aircraft or hauled through snowstorms without cracking. Some versions were designed to fit snugly into survival vests or flight suits, where, honestly, they could save fingers and fuel lines alike. Like so many Cold War innovations, the heating brick eventually made its way into civilian life. By the 1970s, Eastern European households began using smaller consumer versions as bed warmers or portable heaters. You'd heat the block in boiling water, wrap it in fabric, and, well, slide it under your blanket. For families living through power shortages, this little brick was worth its weight in gold. Unlike electric heaters, it didn't draw current or start fires. It was reusable for years and worked even when the power grid failed. In a world terrified of blackouts and winter fuel shortages, the Cold War heating brick was peace of mind you could literally hold in your hands. Here's where this forgotten relic turns from history into, well, a life lesson. The same principles behind the Cold War heating brick are now used in solar thermal batteries and modern survival kits. Sodium acetate and similar phase change materials are at the heart of heat storage systems that capture sunlight during the day and release it at night, especially in off-grid or remote living setups. If you want to recreate the concept yourself, it's easy. Get a set of reusable sodium acetate heat packs, the kind you click to activate, to use them effectively in the field. First, charge them by placing them in boiling water or near a campfire until the contents turn clear. Next, let them cool and keep them sealed in your gear. When needed, snap the internal disc to trigger crystallization and release the heat. Wrap them in a towel or cloth for insulation and place them in your sleeping bag, gloves or under your jacket. Each one gives you hours of clean, steady warmth and can be reused thousands of times. No batteries, no fumes, no fear of freezing. That's the same kind of dependability that Arctic soldiers relied on in the 1950s. And it's exactly the mindset modern survivalists crave. Gear that works when everything else fails. When we think of the Cold War, we tend to picture missile silos, spy planes and propaganda posters. But the truth is, none of that would have mattered without people who could actually endure the conditions of that frozen battlefield. The heating brick wasn't flashy or secret. It wasn't even classified. But it symbolised something deeper. The human need to adapt to build solutions that don't depend on luck, fuel or perfect weather. Every time one of those bricks thawed a frozen ration or saved a stranded pilot, it proved that sometimes, well, survival isn't about firepower. It's about foresight. 
Today, as we talk about sustainability and off-grid living, the same chemistry that powered those Cold War devices still, you know, lights the path forward. Whether you're prepping for an expedition, living remotely, or just trying to keep warm in a blackout, the heating brick's legacy lives on, in every heat battery, in every thermal pack, in every piece of tech that says, I'll work when nothing else will. So, next time you feel the chill and reach for a hand warmer, remember, you're holding a piece of Cold War brilliance. <laughs>